Hey everybody, Big Toad here. Welcome to another video for Unreal Engine 5 doing a 2D game, 2D, 3D hybrid. In this video, we are going to create a blueprint for housing our data and set it up so we can count our coins as we run into them in our game. We are going to need a new blueprint where we can start storing our game data and game level processing. So if we go down and we create a new folder under content. So we'll click on content and go up and click new folder. Then we will name our new folder blueprints. And to make it easier to find, I'm going to change the color, set a new color. I'm going to make it blue. I'll lighten that up a little bit. That'll be easy to find. Make sure you're in the new blueprint folder and click right. Then go up and click blueprint class. And we're going to select actor to make a new blueprint. And we're going to name this blueprint BP underscore data. Now some people say brain or game logic or game data logic or something like that, but I'll use data. Now let's open up that blueprint, double click on it. And when you open it, you may see a view like this and you can go up and hit the open full blueprint editor button and that'll get you a standard uh, view of your blueprint. Now we can see the event graph and the left panel for adding variables. Let's add a variable to count the coins that we pick up in our level. Click on the add variable button and we get a new variable. It's set to boolean. We'll have to change that. We're going to make it an integer and we're going to title this, rename it to coin underscore total. And that'll be for the total coins that we've collected. Now we're going to take this object, this actor we just created in this blueprint, and we're going to drag it out into our level and drop it. And where it ends up is not really all that important because you're not going to see it. But by dropping it into level, it's going to make that actor, which is our blueprint with our data, accessible to all actors who are active within the level. Now there is my data blueprint floating out there in the middle of my level. Feel free to move it wherever you like in your level to get it out of your way. Now we can go to our objects folder and get our coin blueprint and open that up. Let's move over to our event hit and move that destroy actor out of the way a little bit. We're going to have to put some more nodes in there between event hit and destroy actor. Destroy actor needs to be at the end so that it processes everything it needs to and then destroys it. You don't want to destroy it before it's done processing all of the counting you need it to do. Let's give me some room to work and then we'll open our menu. We are going to need to create a custom event. So let's select that. And let's name this get underscore BP underscore data underscore ref. I know this is a long title, but it's very descriptive because this event is going to get us a reference to our blueprint for our data. Let's pull that arrow off of that node and let's type in get all actors of class. Get all actors of class and we'll select that drag it into place and now we're going to search for BP underscore data which is our blueprint for storing our data so we'll click that put that in there now let's drag off of that output and promote that to variable now that creates our variable but we don't need this set this set variable is the wrong one so we will delete that set node. Now let's move over to our new variable we just created. So it's the right type, but it is an array and we don't want an array. The three rows of three dots, that signifies an array, but we don't want our variable to be an array. We only want a reference. We don't want the whole array of data. We just want a reference to it. So there's a simple trick to changing it 
from an array back to a single data element. Watch very closely, this will happen fast. You go up to the data element, put your mouse over the array, and you right click. And now it's a regular data element. And you right click, and it's an array. And you right click, and it's data element. And you right click, and it's an array. And you right click, it's back to a data element. So you can switch it back and forth really quick and easy. That is until you start putting it into your blueprint and then it can really mess things up if you change it. Make sure you leave yours as a single data element like mine is. We still need to rename our new data element. I'm going to call mine BP underscore data underscore ref. Now I'm going to drag that into my field and I'm going to get the set. And now I have the proper set. You see it's no longer setting a array it's setting just a single data element as a reference to that array so i drug off of the out actor from the get all actors of class and i open my menu and i put get and now i say get is a copy and i clip that and now i can connect that into the blueprint data reference see i went from the array over to the normal data element which then sets my data element as a reference to the blueprint. So let's put a comment around that. And we'll say makes blueprint data available to this blueprint. Now that we have reference to our data, let's go ahead and do some math between our event hit and our destroy actor. We'll drag off of our event hit node and search for get blueprint data ref, which is the uh, which is what we just built. So the only time that the data reference that we just created above gets used is if this coin gets hit. Otherwise, it's dormant. That keeps the pr the uh, processing of the game down. It doesn't have to ever run if it never gets hit. Now we need to go back to our data blueprint and do some work there. So let's open up our menu and search for add custom event. I'm going to move these other nodes out of the way so I have more room to work. Now let's click on that and rename it to coin math because that's what it's going to do. It's going to do the math for our coins. I'm going to compile real quick. Let's go to the right details panel and we're going to add an input it would be what's required when this is called and we're going to call this add coin question add coin and that's what we'll have to answer when we call this so we add in a coin or on the other inverse would be uh, subtracting now we're also going to add another variable but this will be an integer and we'll call this coin count that's how many coins Right now, our, all our coins are gonna be worth one coin, but perhaps we'll build some later that'll be worth more. And so now we've got that there if we need it. So now we've got two inputs when we call this. Add coin and count, coin count. Let's go back to the left-hand panel down at the bottom. Let's look at our variables. Remember, we put that new variable in, coin total. And so we wanna pull that in and get a get node for coin total. So we will drag that into our field and select the get. Next, let's open our menu and get a branch. Select branch, pull that up into place. Now let's connect the add coin to the condition because the condition it's going to check is are we going to add or are we going to subtract a coin is this positive negative true or false currently in our game we only have add coins we don't have anything to subtract something but we'll build something to do that in a later video so now let's open our menu and we're going to put a plus in there because we want the add node and we'll drag that down and we're going to connect the coin count on top and the coin total on the bottom. So this, this will add our current coin count to whatever additional coins we just picked up. 
and then we'll pull and get a set coin count and if that's true we're going to add so we're going to add those two together in this plus and then we're going to connect that to there because that's our new number so if it's true we're going to add the incoming to the existing coin total and create a new coin total now if it's false then we have to do the opposite we have to take the coin count that's coming in and subtract it from the coin total that exists. So let's pull down and get a negative or a minus and get the subtract. All right, and the coin total in this case plugs into the top and the coin count plugs into the bottom because we have to take the current coin total minus the incoming coin count and that gives us our new number. And then we'll have to pull in a coin total set. And we can do a control D here and get a, a copy. And then we'll connect to false. And then we'll pull in that node to our new coin count, our new coin total. So there we have the math completed. Now, in order for us to tell if this is working, we're going to have to put in a print string node, which is a testing node. It's not something you should leave in to your game once you're finished. So you can pull off either one of your sets and we're going to put print and then string is right at the top so we'll use that now we're also going to connect this other set because only one of the sets will work each time it's ran let's go back down to left and get our coin total and we'll plug that in there it converts it to a string and now we have a temporary display so we can tell if our counting process is working so that print string will show up in the top left corner of our game while we play it and that information that comes out of there. So I'm gonna organize and then put a comment box around that to keep everything uh, visually appealing. We'll highlight all this and click on it and open up our menu and get the comment box down at the bottom. Let's title this coin math. Now that's all we have to do in this blueprint. So we'll compile this and close it down, save it and close it. And now let's go into our object, our coin, open that blueprint. Now on this blueprint, all we have to do is call that coin math we just created in the other blueprint and send it over the uh, right information so it can do its calculations. So we'll start by pulling in the blueprint data reference data variable and drop it in here a git and because that's a reference we can then draw off of that and type in coin math and we got our node which will call the coin math from the BP blueprint put it between the git blueprint data ref and the destroy actor and plug it in on both ends now we have to set the boolean for add coin yes or no and put in the coin count how many coins were collected we need to put a check in add coin because we are adding it and that's positive and we need to put a one in coin count because we collect one coin now I'm gonna put in another print I'm gonna print screen and we're gonna print text print text Again, this is a feature for testing only. That's why it says development only on the bottom. We'll have to take this out before we finish our game. What print text allows you to do is enter right into this little box what you want it to say. So we're gonna leave us a message on the screen whenever we call coin math. So I think I'll put something in there like sent plus one coin to coin math. Let's compile and save and test out our game. We need to close this blueprint window first and click run so here's our guy let's see what he can do he can move back and forth we jump see everything seems to be working there and there's our coin spinning let's click it ah up at the top right top left i mean you saw the little message watch that top left when i hit this next coin there it is there's our messages now we have two a total of two coins so we've got that math working and that's what i wanted to accomplish today being able to pick up coins and count them in our next video, I think we'll put up a display, a permanent display, a widget on our screen. I hope you got yours working properly, and I hope you had some fun and you learned something. This is the Big Toad, and I am out.